really, really delicious. It tastes really authentic. Mm. I need to know. I need to know. <laughs> it's hot. It's hot. It's hot. Pause, but it hit the back of my mouth. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Asian food you've never seen before in New York City. Just imagine a restaurant that serves only the top item of a bunch of other famous restaurants from Tokyo. Imagine ube sweet cream lattes, authentic Burmese cuisine, and a famous pizza chain now serving sriracha pizza. You already know, Asian food's the new flow. So please hit that like button and let's go. We have a brand new concept from Japan called Jay's Kitchen. Basically what they do is they recreate one dish from famous Japanese restaurants. I'm not just talking about Tokyo. There's Fukuoka, there's Osaka, there's all different types of food here. All right, you guys, we're gonna try the Jimbocho roast beef over rice. Man, this is a very hard dish to find in America, but very, very popular all around Asia. You guys, this is not the best version of Jimbocho beef that I've ever had, but let me tell you, this is one of the best I've ever had in America. And this is actually much better than American roast beef. If there was a metaverse that my friends could link up with their common interests, I would definitely think they should. If I can meet Jimin, absolutely. If I can meet j -Hope, absolutely. They're across the globe, basically, so for us to interact with them, that's, that's a pretty dope idea. Jimmy sounds cool. I should check out Jimmy at a multiverse. Jimmy sounds dope. Thank you everybody for clicking on that video. I'm here at NFT NYC and I'm here to tell you about our sponsor, Jemmy. They are Asia's leading number one entertainment focused metaverse connecting you with your favorite Asian pop musicians. They already signed K-pop, J-pop and some other Asian pop stars. But first, let's find out more about what Jemmy is bringing to the metaverse. All right, I'm here with John Fung, co-founder of Jemmy. We're not related, but why should people join Jemmy? Jemmy is Asia's leading entertainment metaverse. So if you like entertainment, if you like K-pop, J-pop, Asia pop, whatever, come in because we're here to connect celebrities with fans with utility-focused NFTs, customized planets, and virtual events. In Asia, we have so many talented stars, right? If the West can do it, why can't we have one? Then that's what inspired me and my partner, Sunny, also the co-founder of Jemmy, to uh, set up like a, a metaverse platform that can connect fans with their favorite celebrities. Why are utility NFTs more important than just these JPEGs? I think utility is the key to the value of an NFT. So say for example on Jemmy, if you buy an NFT from your favorite star, it can be uh, access pass to their virtual concerts. Or offline, you can actually buy a real t-shirt designed by that particular star. I think that's an online and offline perk system what makes the NFT valuable. Very excited to say that we just signed two K-pop groups and one J pop star and also an Asian superstar Han Jin Tan. He's the guru in the Web3 space. Definitely check out Jemmy.io, our official website. Follow our Twitter, Jemmy underscore official. And our Discord server has got all the alphas in it. Secret information, the leaks, the sneak peeks. Join us. Listen, as someone who is into Asian pop culture myself, I'm pretty excited about Jemmy and I think you should too. So if you guys are interested, please check out their Discord, Twitter, and their Telegram down below because they will have all the updates there. Back to the video. This next dish here is the Asakusu Sando. This is like a Katsu Sando. You guys have seen this before, but man, I have not seen it this big. The origins of the Katsu Sando actually come from like the Swedish French side, which is called Yoshoku food, which is kind of that Japanese mixture with Western food. So this is what came from it. You know, I just think it's really cool that this spot is bringing all like the best dish from these seven different famous Japanese restaurants. You know, they're all part of the same like kind of hospitality group over in Japan, TJAL, which is really big, but I think this is just a cool concept because I think a lot of people would like to imagine a place where they're like, oh, I wanna get the best dish of Din Tai Fung, I wanna get the best dish of here, and I wanna put it together. New concepts in New York City, Asian food to another level. I got the juicy, I think chicken dong? Yeah, I got the same thing as her. It was extremely fast. It came out so quickly and it tastes like so fresh. It was so good. It was really, really delicious. It tastes really authentic. Um, I really like this concept. Like the walk-in and dining was really, really easy and like the decor is really, really cute. So I'm, I personally wouldn't mind like seeing more of this, but I really like how special it is. Like how there's like a few and far in between. So when you come to these kinds of places, it's a really special experience. Super comfortable, like a lot of times what discourages people, I feel like, grabbing just Japanese food is the fact that you have to sit down and get served. And like, obviously that's a nice experience sometimes, but when you're just hungry and you wanna grab something, it's really good. All right, our next restaurant in this new Asian concepts of New York City is 
the only Burmese restaurant in Manhattan. We're outside of Little Myanmar. Guys, uh, it originally comes from Jackson Heights, Queens. The original location uh, is in a subway stop. It's very well known, but they just opened up this location in East Village. We actually have a, a gigantic guy, monk. A, a monk. He lived in a monastery in Myanmar for like a year. Something like that. Go yeah. ahead, Adam. Tell us, tell us about it real quick. Burmese food is oh, very special. It's different from like anything else you've ever had before. You think it's similar to other Southeast Asian cuisine, but honestly, they have so many like tea-based salads. They have like very deep fish flavors, but it's not like that kind of nook mum like like Vietnamese flavors you're used to. It's actually like a whole different kind of in it, like like even like deep lay ocean kind of food, right? Thank you, guys. We gotta go try a little Myanmar. All right, in front of me, we have the two most classic Burmese dishes that you gotta get at any Burmese spot. Here we have the Mohinga. This is like their fish noodle soup. It's got a lot of fried little chickpeas, crisps, um, but it's really, really tasty. I had this in LA, but I haven't had this dish in probably seven years, to be honest. And then here is the, of course, the world famous tea leaf salad. These are fermented tea leaves. There is a lot of caffeine in here, of course, but it has a lot of uh, crunchy soybean nuts. This is truly a unique salad. This is probably the most interesting dish. I need that caffeine kick. Wow. I can taste the bitters from the tea leaves. Yo, that's really good, man. You guys gotta try this. It's almost like a, if I had to say it tastes like another culture, I would almost say it tastes more Italian in that it almost feels like olive oil. Oil from the nuts mixed in with the tea leaves kind of gives it that herbal olive oil vibe. Mohinga in Manhattan. Mmm, super smooth, light fish flavor, savory, peppery, noodles are soft. That mohinga is hitting. All right, guys, here we have the coconut catfish soup. Guys, this food here looks super unique. It's really unique, just like how the language is. If you've ever seen the Burmese letters, uh, written. It's very, very cool looking. And this already has a really cool look with all these different shades of yellow. You have some egg, you have some fried, like kind of one ton like strips here. Let me try this out. You're getting some Chinese influence, you're getting some Indian influence, and you're getting that native Burmese influence all together, guys. All right, this next dish is something I've never had before. This is a carp curry. So they're pieces of carp. And it kind of does look like maybe if I could relate it to one of the clay pot dishes that we have in uh, you know Chinese or Vietnamese culture. But let's look at this. Ooh, that looks flavorful. And Bangladesh, which is right next to Burma, they actually eat a lot of fish too. So, hey man, it could be all somewhat related from back in the day. But this is their carp curry. Burmese carp curry. I gotta say that this dish was pretty good. The curry is not too strong, it's not too spicy, but kind of has like, uh, really lets the fish shine. Ooh, I think I have the fish cheek right here. This is some of the best meat. That's a good. Here I have the Burmese samosa salad. So obviously this is a mixture of the Indian samosa, but there's samosas underneath. Oh my gosh, look at that, guys. I've never had a samosa salad ever in my life. Chopped up samosa salad from Burma. Ooh, the samosas are still crispy. They're freshly fried. Um, bed of greens is nice with the little like kind of potato curry on top. Here I have the unique Shan noodles. Now this is gonna be a culmination of all the countries that border Burma, whether that's Thailand, Laos, China, India, and it might taste a little bit like Pad Thai, but it's made a little bit differently. Shah noodles, chicken and tomato noodles. Wow. Ending off the meal real quick, I got Burmese banana cake. Mmm, soft, it's like a banana pudding. I gotta say, after having all these dishes, man, I love them all. The tea leaf salad was great. The mohinga was great, but definitely come here and get the shan noodles. It's super unique, something that you've never had. Lots of garlic oil, a little bit spicy, like pad thai, but almost like a like a Chinese Sichuan chili oil dish. But uh, check it out, guys. Little Myanmar bringing Burmese food to Manhattan. All right, our next Asian concept is Filipino yakitori. From our friends who did Chismis. Chismis was a Filipino spot here in the Lower East Side, uh, ran by our friend Aries, but they kind of changed up the concept. Now they're doing yakitori, robata style Filipino food. So this is the isao. This is oftentimes um, more done fried uh, like a snack, and then you dip it in the suka and the vinegar, but this is done yakitori style with the glaze. Oh man, look at that char. Guys, I hate pig intestines. Uh, buy it by itself, but if it's done Japanese style, I'll try it. 
crispy, a little burnt, a little sweet. I like it. And this right here is the longanisa yakitori style. This one's good. This is like a longanisa ball. It breaks down really nicely. Got the seasoning in there, a little bit sweet. All right, last but not least, our last Japanese Filipino fusion dish is the Filipino karage. Now, the karage might be cooked more traditional, but this is calamansi aioli. Let me taste this real quick. Mmm, I can feel it. Barson, because you know, usually you squeeze the lemon on top of the karage, but this is calamansi now. Thigh meat pieces, you know what it is. Asians do dark meat. But the calamansi is really coming through on the aioli. I like that. Sarap. up. This Filipino karage is almost something I would imagine would occur like in the island of Oahu or Maui where there are a lot of Filipinos and Japanese in Hawaii. But this is really good. This is a collaboration I never knew that I needed. I think it's pretty cool that Gugu Room is doing a Japanese Filipino fusion because those are two countries that are pretty far apart and they have pretty different cultures. So I think to see their food fused together is pretty cool. So shout out to Eris and the team here at Gugu Room. All right, you guys, we're on the corner of Mulberry and Spring right now. This is an area that a lot of people like because it's by Ame and all the businesses are Ameanized, uh, street prep type vibes. So here we go, guys, Southside. This is Upside Pizza's ice cream concept. They did take a lot of inspiration from Asian soft serve, you know. All right, we're here at Bao Nana's. Originally, they come from Jersey City, started by a Filipino guy named Lloyd. And man, they're basically making this classic American pudding but except with Asian flavors. So classic Americana banana pudding. The so ube, would you say this is your uh, most popular flavor? So the OG, the ube, and the cream and cookies are our best sellers. So ube is a sweet purple yam from Asia. It's a sweeter and more purple cousin of the taro. It's matcha. So it's a Asian infusion flavor of like our bananas. Um, it's not pudding because um, it's more of a mousse, so it's very similar to like tiramisu, and it's also a lot fluffier. Antelope juice, and it's a popular drink in the Philippines. And it ha you can tell it's authentic because it has like the chunks floating inside. Here we have their ube bananas. Here you have the OG one, you have the black sesame, and then you have matcha, and then you have these very cute uh, shibu, shiba inu macarons, and then a bear macaron. These, <laughs> if you didn't know that it was Asian, these macarons are a dead giveaway. Yeah. Guys, when we're talking about new Asian concepts in New York City, man, this is definitely one of them. And shout out to them from starting from Jersey and making it into New York. Mm. Damn, man, if you guys have not had banana pudding like this before, you gotta check it out. It's a classic American dish, but it has a nice little ube twist on it. When it comes to this kind of like classic American pudding, I would say even a lot of young Americans probably don't eat it, let alone they're not even used to seeing like Asian flavors here at a pudding shop because there are not even that many pudding shops, period. There's more like Asian ice cream shops. Mmm, got the black sesame, very fragrant. I like it. Matcha. Gotta try the Filipino cantaloupe's juice. Very refreshing, not too sweet. But watch out for those shavings, it's gonna get stuck in the straw. Uh, Cal's from Bao Nana's. What is it like uh, to be pushing kind of like Asian culture, but through like a very, very old American like dessert? Um, it's like my pleasure to actually like give this type of flavors to people who aren't familiar with it. It's always great to try something new and you can't go wrong. Like the textures are there, the flavor is there, and you know, pride in like the Asian culture. What do, what do you think people just need to know to even try this more? Like, cause I think some people, they're probably like, well, I don't even go to pudding shops period. And this is like an Asian one. So it's kind of weird. Yeah. But what do they need to know about pudding? Um, so pudding, this isn't really pudding per se, cause pudding's like a really thick consistency. This is a lot smoother. It's a lot more like tiramisu. It's really light. So you won't feel heavy after eating it. It's kind of like a mashed up creamy cake. If okay. tiramisu and pudding met each other, this would be like their love child. All right, guys, new classic Americana, except with an Asian twist. Shout out to Bananas. We got to give a huge shout out. Anytime a flushing chain makes it out of flushing, goes across the country, opens up in the city. This is Mad for Chicken. They're serving more deeper cut, authentic scallions on top of fried chicken. It's a ch Korean chicken dish that maybe you would only know about if you've been in a Korean enclave. Let's check out the express version. All right, you've all had regular Korean fried chicken, but have you had this dish, parak? Okay, parak literally translates to scallions chicken over in Korea. So here we have deep fried chicken tenders, you know, Korean style. 
crispy batter, not too thick, and then we have a heap of scallions and onions on top, um, and what he told me to do is pour all the sauce on top first. Guys, this is a dish that comes from Korea. Guys, I've never had a Korean fried chicken salad before. This is it. It kind of gives me that vibe that I'm at Korean barbecue, and they give me the scallion salad on the side. Not all Korean barbecue spots will give you that, but the more traditional ones do. Um, I think this is really cool. It gets a little bit of greens in there while you're eating fried chicken, and obviously the fried chicken tenders are done very, very well. Scallion fried chicken. This is the next advancement in the Korean fried chicken game. Look out and try this if you can. You guys, we're at Suki. This is an award-winning curry katsu cooked by a Korean chef. And uh, pretty excited, man. This is award-winning, guys. This is not cooked to be comfort food, even though it is comfort food. You know, it's cooked to be exquisite. Quality-wise, guys, it is one notch above go-go curry. The curry aspect tastes less preserved. I think that this was a very light fry. It's not over-fried. Sometimes I feel like go-go curry is fried too much. So, shout out to Suki. I'm glad that more elevated versions of things that used to be classic in Asian New York cuisine are here. Our next new Asian spot in New York City is the Boba guys. Now they were in New York, but they left and they came back. Of course, originally from SF. Shout out to Andrew and Ben, but they are back in the city and they got some seasonal flavors. Let's check it out. Right, we got the Pitya one right here. We got some fruit at the bottom. I'm gonna mix it up. It looks great. Lots of boba, let's see. That's pretty good. It's very sweet though. You know me, I don't have a sweet tooth, I'm like David. Dirty banana milk, based off the Korean banana milk. Oh, that one's good. I like that one. It's kind of like a horchata banana milk. Coffee mojito, this might be my favorite because I like coffee too. Coffee with a little uh, minty lime side to it, I like it guys. One of the best things that Boba Guys does is expose a lot of people who would never try boba otherwise and bring them into our world. Now, I know that these aren't always the most traditional flavors, but they're super high quality. This is where you might see like Taylor Swift grabbing boba because I just don't know if she's going to Yifong Fruit Tea. Boba, guys. Okay, so here at Art Bean, like, what is your guys' goal? Like, what you so we are coffee roasters. We roast our own coffee in the Brooklyn Navy Yards. But since we opened our shop in, on Doris Street, we are also bringing in some of the, our Asian flavor. You uh, see things like Starbucks, Blue Bottle, you know, Stumptown, mm -hmm. like those are all just very classic coffee recipes. Mm -hmm. And so we have that, we have that specialty coffee, but we also want to like throw in that infused Asian, you know, flair. Mm -hmm. latte this is a hot one yeah that's good that's how you know it's good when the cop latte art is still there after you've been drinking it here I have the shaken espresso with sweet cream this is their take on a Vietnamese coffee it's not the cafe suda that everybody knows but a different one so let's check it out yo that's actually really good that coconut flavor is coming through very strong. I've had coconut milk in lattes before, but this one, I think it's the coconut sweet cream that's making the difference. Last but not least, we got the brown sugar oat milk latte. When you can't choose between tiger sugar or blue bottle, come here, Art Bean. Whoa, that is good. That is sweet too. Guys, I think it's so cool that kind of new, modern, state-of-the-art coffee shops are opening up in the middle of Chinatown because even 10 years ago, you probably didn't see that many Asian people even do coffee and especially own their own coffee shops, especially infusing Asian flavors. So I'm pretty excited about it. All right, everybody, our next Asian concept in New York City is Fish Market number two. The first location was in South Seaport. It's a staple out there. It's a super divey bar. But this one here just opened up in East Village. It is a Chinese Malaysian bar. And you know what? Like, I think the food looks very good. It's cooked by a Chinese Malaysian mother back there. So you know, guys, the food is probably fairly authentic and it goes well with drinks. In Chinese and the native Malay uh, flavors, but Guys, I think Canton Malaysian works well because a lot of people say Cantonese food doesn't have that much flavor, but no one says that about Malaysian food, so. Oh, that's really good. Yo, this has a lot of spice, a lot of cream, 
But let me tell you, just because there's a lot of non-agents here does not mean the food is not spicy. Curry laksa, they have a shrimp paste stuffed. In the curry laksa, they have a shrimp paste stuffed pepper. This reminds me of that dim sum dish that you can get. So I don't know, man. Maybe it did come from Malaysia or maybe they incorporated this because of dim sum. I don't know. Guys, this is the classic nasi lemak. I mean, let's look at how they did it. You have your fried anchovies, nuts. You have your curry chicken. You're gonna eat with your hands. Let's get messy here at Fish Market. Makan, makan, the nasi lemak. Guys, nasi lemak is very much a Malay Indonesian dish. I mean, this is very, very traditional. Trust me, a lot of spots won't serve this. Guys, this is the world famous char kway tiao. Okay, as you can see, it is stir fried rice noodles. It's got heavy, heavy, heavy flavor. You know, quite a bit of oil, but very, very plump shrimp. This does look like it came straight out the hawker stall. You got a little lap churring in there. Let me try this. That is probably some of my more favorite char kway tiao that you can even get in New York, especially Manhattan. Mm. All right, guys, here we have our three proteins. We have these big, pork chops that are fried guys this does kind of look like something that you could get at a hong kong cafe but maybe done a little bit differently and of course you know this is probably from the chinese side since chinese people love pork and a lot of malays they don't eat pork uh or a lot of pork for a number of reasons probably religious my first time having malaysian fried garlic pork chops crispy salty garlicky i love it but it is very much a pork chop uh. Guys, we have the classic and one of my favorite Southeast Asian dishes in the world, beef rendang. Now, they do it a lot of different ways in different regions or different countries. This one's more saucy in little bits. Sometimes it comes in big chunks, but you know I can't go to a Malaysian restaurant without getting the rendang. Mmm. Whoa. But man, I gotta say, Considering there's a lot of guaylo here, this food is spicy, it is kicking. Right here, I have chicken thigh curry. Of course, curry coming from, you know, the India influence. And you know, guys, Malaysia actually still counts as kind of being part of the India sphere, meaning that's the part of Southeast Asia that was heavily influenced by trade with India. Spicy, oily, but delicious. All right, everybody, our last dish here is the pork belly with bok choy. I'll tell you this, it does look a lot more like a Cantonese dish, obviously with the bok choy and the, uh, what we would call it as cow yuk. This is one of my favorite dishes here. I think it's great because New York City is maybe the only place you're gonna get a mixture of this dive bar sailor culture in with this Malaysian hawker stall culture and it blends here at Fish Market, guys. Honestly, I love the food, it impressed me. I didn't know what to expect, but these are my two favorite dishes. You guys gotta come check it out. New Asian concepts only in New York City. All right, here we got Scoville Hot Fried Chicken, guys. This chain is actually started by Justin Lim. He's originally from LA, but he was doing ramen and then he moved to Texas and now he started this chain. So it is Korean owned. Although I wouldn't say there's too many Asian elements to it, except the attention to detail. Look at this. This is the Reaper level. This is the hottest level that they have here. Oh my gosh. Yo, we All just right. popped in, man. We got right. Dwayne, man. All right, Dwayne. Dwayne, you said you just had this the other day. I did. But, but what I had level the, hotness did you have? I, I, I had the hot. But this is the reefer. Are you, you good with this? Let's go. We're going to go in? Let me, let me, let me put like, this in action mode. Hey, one of us goes in and we all go through it. Do you know this spot's owned by Koreans? Really? Yeah, spot owned by Asian. But I don't know. It's not. You know, it kind of looks like a, a Japanese katsu sando. All right, let's check it out. Reaper level, Scoville hot fried chicken. Mm. I need to know. I need to know. <laughs> it's hot. It's hot. It's hot. It's yeah, it hit the <coughs> pause, but it hit the back of my mouth. <laughs> it's really good, guys. Oh wow! Yeah, style, yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! Are you crying? I just need some garlic fries, man. Yo, it's like the more and more I breathe. Yeah, the Reaper will wake you up. I'm awake. I'm good. So I know that chicken sandwich wasn't particularly Asian in flavor, but the owner is Asian, and I feel like the new Asian concept of 2022 is just that Asians are opening up non-Asian food spots. And I mean, maybe the thing about it being Asian is maybe the branding or, you know, the attention to detail, but man, I'm looking forward to more people opening up more like, you know, chicken spots in the future. So new Asian concepts, let's keep it going. Guys, our next Asian concept in New York City is Champion Pizza. And they're not necessarily an Asian business, but they are doing Sriracha everything now. They have Sriracha chicken bowls, chicken wings, Sriracha chicken sandwiches, and Sriracha chicken cones. Let's go. 
All right, everybody, here I have the Sriracha fleet. I got the Sriracha chicken cone, I have the Sriracha chicken and waffles bowl, and I have the Sriracha chicken sandwich. All right, gonna try the Sriracha chicken cone. What they're doing here is almost replacing some of the buffalo wing flavor, that spice, with the Sriracha. So it's kind of like a Sriracha buffalo wing mixture. All right, chicken and waffles. Nice bed of fluffy waffles, some sweet syrup, it's pretty good. All right, this is a sriracha chicken sandwich. I get you, my boy, look at that. Sriracha oh, oh my pizza. goodness. Mm. Sriracha pizza, guys. We've arrived, sriracha's mainstream enough now. It's known by enough people. Chicken pizza. I'll tell you guys, replacing the buffalo sauce with the sriracha, it's a big brain move. I don't know, this might start a trend where it's no longer that buffalo wing sauce. It's like a sriracha mix. I guess that just goes to show you that sriracha is at that point where, you know, it came from Thailand originally. It was kind of rethought by a Chinese Vietnamese guy in Rosemead, California. It blew up and now you can find it even replacing buffalo wing sauce. So this might be the future. Asian food in New York. Honestly, you guys need to come to Champion Pizza Plus and try this sriracha pizza. It's on point. All right, you guys, we're at Three Roosters. This is the Thai iced tea with condensed milk. This is without. Observe the differences. For me, you know, it's no question. Go with the condensed milk. Ah, All right, you guys, our first contender in the chicken and rice wars of New York City is Three Roosters. The owners are Chinese Thai from Thailand uh, with a Chinese background. Um, you know, this is their roast version, guys. Everybody does it a little bit different. This is, of course, the poached cow moon guy with the uh, chicken flavored rice at the bottom. Everybody has their own favorite country. You know, Malaysia, Singapore, Vietnam, Hainan Island itself, and of course, Thailand, Laos. All right, you guys, this is their roast chicken version. Everybody in New York City has to get the roast chicken version, even though, of course, in Thailand, the poached one is much more popular. Um, their sauce here is really interesting because you gotta mix it yourself dry with some zab on top. This is the roast cow moon guy from Three Roosters. As you notice, there's some sticky rice instead of the chicken ginger rice. I'm gonna give it a seven. As you guys know, the Thai sauce is a little bit more sour than any sort of Singaporean, Malaysian version would be. This is the poached version. For me, I'm always gonna go with the dark meat piece. Um, it's just, I prefer it strongly. I'm gonna give this an 8.25 on the poached. You know, I'm very, very hard credit because I love poached, you know, cow moon guy, high non chicken, 8.25. So one of the things I like about Three Roosters is I really like the broth and I like the poached chicken. And here in this dish, the hao tum gai, which is a new dish I've never had before, but very traditional. This is a riced and poached chicken soup. So there's no noodles, it's just rice. You got the poached chicken on top, you got your little crispy onions. Almost looks like a Japanese uh, chazuke. I think it took a while for the whole chicken and rice thing to really come to New York, but I feel like it can actually last because it's an everyday food and it's relatively healthy. Now, I do know in New York, everybody's gotta have a roasted and a fried version. Here we have the Zob wings, and Zob is just like a popular Thai spice, and a lot of the Thai chicken spots are gonna be serving their version of a fried Zob wing, because you know, also the East Coast loves their wings. So I'm gonna compare this to the next one, but let me just ooh, break that bone out. It's fresh, everything's fresh today, wow. No sauce. Zob, for those who haven't had it, is kind of like your Thai version of lemon pepper, but instead of lemon, it tastes more like lime. These are pretty good, and they're fresh wings, uh, so I definitely give these a uh, seven out of 10. Kap kum kab, thank you for the Zob. On to the next spot. All right, you guys, the second contender on the battle of the brand new chicken and rice spots to NYC is Eat Guy. You guys, they've got multiple locations in downtown New York. I mean, um, they've got the roast chicken. Of course, they've got the cow moon guy, which is the poached. And of course, they've got the fried Zob wings. Zob, of course, is a classic Thai style mixed rub. All right, you guys, let's take a look. The poached, I'm gonna give it a seven from Eat Guy. Okay, they got a little bit of a different sauce for the uh, roasted cow moon guy. I'm gonna give that a 7.5. Last but not least, we have the Zob Fried Thai Wings. Let's check this out. 
overall this zob wing was the strongest part of eat guy i'm gonna give it an eight and overall i'm gonna give it a 7.25 rating in the chicken and rice wars of nyc i really think the zob wings were something special here though honestly i might have to amend my score to 8.5 on the zob wing this is good all right, we're here at Evil Katsu. This is their brick and mortar location. They started as a pop-up in the LES. Look how big this is, guys. New Asian concepts, bread cut off, milk bread, of course, delicious, super, super thick. Really like about this chicken. It's super juicy, it's crispy, and it actually has some of the same seasoning that reminds me of KFC, that, that pepper seasoning. All right, so here we have one of their newer dishes. These are blistered shishito peppers with um, scallion yuzu aioli. What a mix, guys, all made in-house. I love shishitos, because it gives you that pepper vibe, it gives you that pepper feeling and that pepper taste without the heat. Andrew, the second you said that there was KFC seasoning, I had to go for it. Of course, you know, we asked for extra mayo. That's how, you know, I like sandwiches. That's good. So go ahead. I think it's cool to think about it this way, that the concept of a sandwich comes from the West and went to Japan, you know, a while ago. It becomes the katsu, and then the katsu comes back and is now cooked by Western people who love Japanese culture. Guys, I, I think it's amazing. It's a whole cycle. This is New York City, new Asian concepts, evil katsu. Very worth trying, especially if you're into Japanese sandos.